Hello humans, my name is Kenjo Air Overload and today's video is gonna be pretty trippy because in this video we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new video to video tool released by Runway ML called Gen 1 which is a brand new super cool tool that allows you to transform any video into another one using either a prompt or a source image where you can get some very interesting results and since I finally got access to it I thought why not try this tool live and see what kind of results you can get with this brand new tech so let's go. Now as of right now Gen 1 only works inside Discord, which to be honest is probably not the best platform for this, but you know it is how it is. And if you want to have access to it, you can click the link in the description down below and then click right here to request access, where you will have to fill a form. And if you want to have access to it sooner, in this space right here, did a friend refer you to this waiting list? If so, please add the email address they used for their runway account. Here you can input my email address, which is the aiantrepreneur at gmail.com. This way you should have access to it a little bit sooner. And then finally, do not forget to join the Discord server, because otherwise your application will not be taken into account. And once you finally have access to it, you will see a bunch of new channels appear. And one of the most important channels is probably the welcome instructions, because down below you will see a very short video that will explain everything on how to use Gen 1 correctly. So basically what they say in that video is that you need to use files that are less than 8 megabytes or less than 100 megabytes if you have Disco Nitro, but unfortunately as of right now Gen 1 can only process up to 95 frames of video which is around 3 seconds, which is really not a lot, but if you want to you can of course take a full video split it in 3 second segment, run it with Gen 1 and then put them back together inside a video editing tool. But obviously it would be really cool if in the future you could process longer videos. They also show you and explain a bunch of values that you can change for the generation, like the CG scale, the seed, the mask mode, the subsampling, etc etc. And finally once you're ready to generate you can finally click on one of those three channels right here that start with generate. And for each one of those channels you can see what people try to make. So here for example you have someone that inputted a video of a guy dancing I suppose in a very weird a very strange way. Then you link this image which is a pretty cool cyberpunk like image. Very interesting very stylized and then Gen 1 took that video took that image and kind of merged them together to finally generate something like this. So yes, unfortunately, again, there is only 3 seconds, so it's very, very short. It's very difficult to see if the results are actually good or not, but it seems to me that we have a pretty high level of temporal coherency, which is definitely what we want for a video. And here is another example by the same person who inputted a video of a girl walking with the same style image as before, and this is what Gen 1 created. So again, this is very, very short. It's very difficult to see if the video is actually good or not. But again, I don't see any flickering. I don't see any artifact that we see in the usual stable diffusion generation. So I think that this could actually be very, very interesting. Now, I decided to download and try out four different videos. The first one is a group of friends dancing. You see a lot of movement. You see a lot of different characters, which if you try to do this in stable diffusion would be very difficult because again, the temporal coherency would be very difficult to attain, then you have a beautiful video of some waves, could be very interesting to transform this into something like lava, so we'll see if Gen 1 can do it. Then you have a pretty cute but beautiful video of a little frog, there isn't a lot of movement here so I'm really hoping that Gen 1 can make this video really really good. And finally another video of a lone woman, this one dancing, very similar to the first one, but this time we only have one character. And to use Gen 1 is actually very simple. You're gonna go inside one of those generate channels and in message you're gonna type at gen1 then you're gonna upload your video in your image. I'm gonna start with this video of a woman dancing and then I'm gonna try to combine this with this image of a cyberpunk girl that I found on lexica.art and then finally I'm gonna use these basic settings that I copied from another video made by someone else and then paste them right here. And also just in case here I'm gonna input the same prompt that was used to create this image which is basically a portrait of an emo punk woman and then I'm gonna press enter. And now as you can see we have now a new thread that you can check until the generated video is done. And depending on the amount of people on the server, this usually takes between 1 to 5 minutes. Alright, this is the final result. This was done pretty quickly. I think in my case it took less than 1 minute to create the video, so let's check it out. This is the final result, which is very interesting. Again, it's very very short. I really hope that the video could be longer in the future, but from what I see it's actually really not bad. Sure, we lose a lot of the details on the face, but what's really cool is that it added 
sunglasses exactly like I specified in the prompt and in the image. So that's actually really not bad. But obviously with only 3 seconds of video it's really difficult to see the quality of the generation. It's really really difficult. Now one thing that I also noticed is that the video that you see right here that was generated feels a little slow. It's almost like slowed down compared to the original video that you see right here. So now I'm actually gonna redo the generation, but this time I'm gonna change some sampling from 2 to 1. And I'm also gonna double the denoising steps to see if somehow this creates a better, more consistent video. Alright, it's done. This time the generation took a bit longer compared to the previous one. It took around 2 minutes, which is still fine, which is still very fast. And now if we check out the results, you have something like this, which for some reason looks even slower than before. Okay, so I played around a little bit and apparently the subsampling number is the amount of frames that Gen 1 is supposed to skip. So the higher the number, the faster the video will look and the lower the number, the more frames there will be, but the video will also seem slower. The problem with that is that the base value that they use, which is a subsampling of 2, if you play the video, the video seems way slower than the original. Again, this is the original, which is the normal speed, looks good, looks okay. And this is with a subsample of 2, which definitely feels way slower. So if you decrease the subsampling to something like 1, it creates a video that is even slower. And if you increase that to something like 4, your video will seem way faster. But unfortunately 4 is a little too much, and it's even worse if you choose something like 8, which skips a lot of frames, but at the same time, which is very interesting, it still creates a very smooth video. It's just that a few movements are missing. So I actually found that using a subsampling of 3 creates basically the best video, which still seem a little slow for some reason, but it is by far the closest to the original speed. So now let's play a little bit with the settings and see exactly what they do. So for example, apparently the depth blur level allows you to blur everything in the background, everything but the center subject. So for example, let's put a 4 for the depth blur level without changing anything else. If now I press enter, I'm expecting to have the exact same video, but this time with the background completely blurred. And there you go, this is the generated video. And well, I don't really see as much blur as I thought it would be. And although it is the exact same seed, the character itself also looks a little bit different. So I'm not quite sure what happened here. I don't really see the blur and the character definitely changed. So I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I increase the value a little bit, I'm gonna use a very high value, so something like 10 for example, and unfortunately it gives me an error, so maybe that value is a little too high. In the video it gives you a recommended level of 0 to 5, so maybe level 5 is the maximum amount. So again if I try with 5, maybe we will get a better result, but to be honest I'm not expecting a lot of changes between a value of 4 and 5. And this is the finished video, uh, I mean again, interesting. But the character also changed, so I'm not quite sure what the depth blur level is really doing. So yes, we have indeed less details in the background, but our character also changed. So I'm not even sure if this is running correctly. So now let's take a look at the CFG temporal scale parameter, which apparently the lower the level, the less coherence you will have in the image, which is probably not what you want. So you definitely want a higher level to something like 1.25, but I'm gonna try this out anyway and use a 0.5 for the CMG temporal scale just to see what kind of videos we can get with this. So this is the final video, which indeed looks a lot like a stable diffusion video that you would do it yourself. There is a few artifacts and yet, despite the fact that there is a lot of like variation in the images, it's still very, very coherent, at least compared to a normal stable diffusion video that you would do yourself. But obviously I think that a higher value is definitely way better. Now I'm not gonna try the CUG scale because we all know how this works. Usually the higher the value, the more saturated the image will be and the lower the value, the less saturated it is. Then the seed, I mean different seed produce different results. Then you have the upscale parameters that allows you to upscale the video, which unfortunately takes a lot of time, so I'm not gonna try this out also. Then you have the compare parameters that allows you to compare the before and after, all of that in the same video. 
The interpolate option allows you to basically create multiple frames in the video so that it's basically smoother, but it also introduces more artifacts, so it's probably not something that you want also. So only foreground depth only applies the result to the subject and then generate a background. So maybe we can try this to see what kind of results we can get with this parameter. So here for only foreground depth, I'm gonna put true and then press enter. And this is the final video and basically, yeah, I mean, it creates like kind of this non-moving and fixed background and with the subject using only the style of the image and the prompt, which is interesting, but I'm not sure if you really want to use this kind of parameters and if you really want to have this kind of results. Because I think that the next one, the next parameter is definitely way more interesting. And that is the green screen parameter. Because compared to the only foreground depth parameter, this actually applies the result to the subject and creates a green background. Meaning that you can import this into your video editing tool and then remove that background and replace it with something else. Which actually make this probably one of the most useful features. And I'm gonna try it out right now. So I'm just gonna put here true for the green screen parameter and then press enter. And this is the final video, which indeed created this kind of green background behind the character. Now it's not perfect, there is definitely a lot of green color on the character also. So definitely not perfect, but it's still pretty cool. And then finally, you have the mask mode foreground, which basically applies the result to the subject and not the background. And the mask mode background, which basically does the exact opposite. Applies everything to the background and nothing on the subject. So let's first try the mask mode foreground and see what kind of results we get. And this is the final video, and indeed, as you can see, the background is left untouched, while the subject gets a lot of the style from the base image. And now if I do the opposite, and I choose the mask mode background, and I press enter, and this is the final result, which indeed, of course, it creates like kind of this very stylized background, and leave the central subject untouched. Again, it's not perfect, you can see a lot of colors on the gloves, but other than that, it's pretty cool nonetheless. And the one last thing that I would like to try before we move on to another video is the impact of the prompt for the generation. So if I take out the prompt and just leave the image and the video together, and if I press enter, I would be very curious to know if the result is better or worse with or without the prompt. And this is the final result, so if I click play, uh, yeah, indeed, I actually don't see any difference. I don't see any difference compared to the video with the prompt, actually. So this is the video with the prompt, and this is the video without, which personally I don't really see a lot of difference, because if you compare them side by side, on the very first frame, they're basically the exact same, which yeah, indeed they are literally the exact same video. Meaning that actually using the prompt in combination of the image does not do anything. But now let's do the opposite and use the prompt without the base image. Again, I'm using the exact same seed, the same parameters, but this time I only have a prompt. So if I press enter, and this is the generated video that, well, already looks very different from the previous one. So if I click play, Indeed, it's very different. Not quite sure I really like this one, to be honest. I think the previous one is definitely better. It's more coherent. The style is also a little bit better, I think. This one just kind of looks weird, in a way. I wouldn't say bad, but it's definitely not my style. So I definitely think that the prompt function is not as useful as using an entire image for the style. Okay, so now let's do another video. What I would like to do now is to transform this video of a frog into a cartoon version wearing a crown. So something like this. And I'm wondering if Gen 1 can do that. So again, I'm gonna input the video and the base image. I'm gonna basically leave every parameters by default and then press enter. And this is the final video. And unfortunately, as you can see, uh, I already see that there is a crown that is missing. So it has already not created the video that I wanted. But yeah, this is not exactly what I was expecting. Now, what I'm thinking is that maybe Gen 1 did not understood that the crown was actually a very important part of the image. So maybe if we take an image from the video 
and then run it through Stable Diffusion and use the first frame as a base image for the style, maybe Gen 1 will understand the image and style better and basically merge the first frame with the video. So for example, if I come here and I take a screenshot of the first frame of the video, then in Stable Diffusion, I'm gonna take this image and then convert it into a frog with a crown by using image to image and control net and then using the imp and sketch tab to draw a crown. And now inside Gen 1, I'm gonna click here, select the video and the image and then press enter. And what I'm hoping is that basically Gen 1 will take this image and merge that style and form and shape with the video. Since we are basically using the first frame of the video to create a new style, I'm hoping that this trick will work. And unfortunately it did not. It did not work at all. I think the only difference compared to the other video is the fact that now we have a little bit more yellow and a bit more gold-like features in the video. But yeah, unfortunately other than that there isn't anything comparable to what I was trying to do. And even trying with a different seed does produce a very similar looking result. Which I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda disappointed. Because that means that you really don't have a lot of control over the final result. Okay, so now let's try out another video. I would like for example to change the waves or the water from this video into a lava-like substance. And to reproduce the lava, I'm gonna be trying this image right here. And of course I'm gonna be using the base parameters. So I'm really hoping to get something very interesting. And this is the final generated video. Indeed, that looks a lot like lava, but at the same time there isn't a lot of details in the image, so it's kinda difficult to tell at the same time. So in a way it's kinda a success, but I'm pretty sure that you can do something similar if not better in Stable Diffusion directly. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still pretty cool, it was generated pretty fast, but also these 3 seconds limit are really really annoying. And finally, for the last test video, I would like to transform this group of friends dancing into robots or androids. So again, same base parameter, and I'm gonna be using this beautiful image for the style. And now if I press enter, I'm really hoping that we will get something very interesting. We have here multiple characters dancing in different ways, so having temporal coherency here is very very difficult. And this is the final generated video, which I'm not gonna lie, already looks a little derpy. And... I mean, yeah, it's it's something. That's that's definitely is something. Um, uh, that looks a little weird. But uh, what I'm really surprised by Gen One is the fact that I don't see any flickering at all. Which compared to something that you would do in Stable Diffusion, you would have a lot of artifacts. But here, everything looks pretty pretty smooth. Although a lot of the details are really washed out and there isn't a lot of details in the end. So, um, I don't know. Now don't get me wrong, I think it's a very interesting technology but I think that we're still very far off of being able to create very interesting and very precise videos. But hey, that's just my opinion. Again, this tech is very new. There is a lot of work left to be done, but I'm sure that one day we will get there eventually. So there you have it folks, don't necessarily listen to me. Try this out yourself. Try to create some cool videos yourself. I mean, it's free after all, so might as well do it. And if you manage to generate some cool videos, don't forget to share with me on my Discord. The link for it will be in the description down below. And there you go, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters, you guys are absolutely awesome. You guys are the ones who support me to make these videos possible, so big thank you to you, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.